Mastering Excel in 2024. Let's take a look at some of the new functions Microsoft has created over the last few months. Choose Columns and Choose Rows. A couple new functions that Microsoft created over the last few months is Choose Columns and Choose Rows. If you type in Choose Columns with C-O-L-S, it wants you to pick an array and a column number. So let's take this array of data and we'll choose column one. And it returns just the first column from that array. Now you can do multiple column choices here. So let's do one and four. And that returns the first and the last column. You can also use negative numbers. So instead of one, let's do minus one. And that essentially starts from the end. So it does the last column. Do minus three, one, two, three, and it does that second column in the array. You can also name the array. So if you want to take this area of information, come up here to the name box and just type in an array name. Now in your array for choose columns, you can put array one. If you want to take a look at the arrays, go into Formulas, Name Manager, and you can see all the arrays that you've defined. Choose Rows is very similar. Here you put in the array, so we're going to select our array of data again, and you put in the row number. So let's do row number 2, row number 4, and row number 5. And you can see it returns just the rows for two, four, and five. Just like the other one, you can do negative numbers, minus one, minus three, and you can see it returns from the bottom, minus one and minus three. The one last thing I'll mention is choose rows and choose columns are both dynamic arrays. So you can see when you enter it into the first column here, it spills over to the remaining locations. Now those are grayed out, so you can't actually edit any of the data that's in there because it's all tied to this primary cell in the upper left corner. But you can refer to them, so I could say equals that, and it's going to pull the data out of that column and row. So if you haven't looked at dynamic arrays, take a look at one of my other dynamic array videos and I'll put a link above. Drop and expand. Another couple of functions very similar to the last is the drop and expand functions. Drop works like this. You select an array and then you say, how many rows do you want to drop from that array? So let's drop two rows. And what it does is it leaves just this area with those two rows dropped. You can also select columns. So let's skip the rows and let's drop two columns. And you can see it got rid of these two columns and left these two right here. You can mix the two. So let's drop two rows and one column. And it's pulled just this information right here. You can also use negative numbers just like we did before. So let's do minus one and minus two. And you can see leaves you with this information right here, dropping the last row and the last two columns. The opposite of drop is expand. So let's say we want to expand this array. And instead of six rows, we'll make it eight. And instead of four columns, we'll make it five. That expands it out to the larger size and it leaves this NA in the areas that you don't have data. Now you can come back in here and you can pad that with whatever symbol you want, but now it's an expanded array that you can then fill in information later. Take. The take function is kind of the opposite of the drop function. Let's take this array and we're going to specify three rows. And you can see it pulls three rows from that array, but it lists all of the columns without even specifying how many we wanted. And that's one of the benefits of the take function. 
You can also specify the number of columns you want. So we'll do three rows and two columns. And that pulls the first three rows and two columns. Take also works with negative numbers. So if we do minus one, that's going to pull the last row with all of the columns from that array. And that's a much more complex formula to figure out if you didn't have the take function. So that's one of the benefits of this function over other ones. Another nice feature of this function, 10 rows. Well, it still only shows you the six rows that are in the list. So you can have bigger numbers than what the array actually provides. This makes it easy to pick a fixed amount of space from an array if you're using it somewhere else in your spreadsheet. Overall, I consider the take function one of the most useful. HStack and VStack. HStack works like this. You can take multiple sets of arrays and stack them together horizontally. It just spreads those four data elements we selected horizontally across the columns. Now you can do ranges as well. So let's take this range of three and we'll add it with these range of three over here. And you can see it horizontally stacks those two sets of data across the columns. Now what happens if your ranges are rows of data? So let's take these three and we'll stack them with these two right here. And you can see it just takes those two sets of data and stacks them horizontally across the columns. Now let's say they're different sizes. So we're going to go ahead and take these three right here and we'll stack it with these two. It just fills in the remaining space with NA. VStack works the same way, but vertically. So let's pick an array. We'll take these two right here and these two. And you can see it took the first two, listed them, and then vertically across rows, it listed the second set. So let's do some multiple rows and multiple rows over here. And you can see it stacked those two sets of data vertically across multiple rows. Two column and two row. These two functions allow you to put all the data from an array into one column or one row. So if we do two call, take that array, it puts it into one column. Now it does have other parameters in here. The first being ignore blanks or errors. And the second one, either scan it by row, by default, or by column. So if we change this to column, you'll see that it puts everything from column one, followed by everything from column two, and so on. And as expected, to row works similar, but it puts everything into one row. And again, you can change the order, ignoring the blanks, and making it by column instead of row by default. If you had a set of data with a bunch of numbers, this might be really good to combine everything into one column so that you can add up all those numbers in one list. And it can be useful to pull all those numbers and eliminate any errors in the data. Wrap columns and wrap rows. Wrap columns works like this. We can take a set of data, it has to be a single series, and we're going to wrap that in threes. That essentially takes three rows and then wraps into the next column for the next three rows. If I were to change this to four, for example, it does four rows and then goes to the next column. And when it runs out of data, it fills that in with an A. Now you can change the series to a row as long as it's only one row. And we'll do that by three. And that spreads it out into rows and then starts another column with the next set and fills in NA for the remaining data that's not available. And as expected, wrap rows. 
works the way you would want. We're going to take a series of data here and we're going to do a two wrap count. And that takes the data and spreads it across two columns and then moves to the next row and adds the remaining data there. If we were to do it with three, it's going to put the first three on one row followed by the second three. Text after, text before, and text split. These are functions that extract data from text strings. So text after pulls data out of a string after the specific delimiter. So in this case, I'm going to pick a comma. And when it finds the first comma in the string, it extracts all the data after that. Now you'll notice there's an extra space in here. So we can change this parameter to include a comma and a space. The other thing it allows you to do is pick the nth instance number. So let's say I want the second instance of the comma and it returns everything after that second comma in the list. You can also use negative numbers. So if we pick minus one, it's going to be the one on the end. And if we do minus two, it's going to take the second from the end. Text before works almost the same. So if we type in text before and we select that as the text and we put in our comma with a space as our delimiter, it's going to pick the text before the first comma. And just like text after, you can put in a parameter here for the instance number. And you can use negative numbers as well. In this case, it gives you all the text before the last comma. Text split works a little bit differently. Let's enter our text split function right here. We'll select a phone number with a delimiter of a dash. In this case, you can see it actually spreads out over multiple columns the different data elements separated by that delimiter. Now let's say that phone number also had an extension we can add another delimiter for the row. So let's use that X and you can see it spreads out those three numbers and then on the next row it puts the extension after the X. Now here's something that you can try as well. Let's say you have a set of data and there's little bits of variation in how the spelling or the spacing is used. Well if you put in something like text before to get the last name out of this list separated by a comma. It works on that one, but when we copy it down to the other ones, you can notice it doesn't work on this last one because it's not separated by the comma. What you can do is actually put in here multiple options for your delimiter, and all you have to do is separate them with a curly bracket and a comma, and we'll do a comma with a space, and we'll do a period and an end curly bracket. And now when we copy this down, it works for all three. You could do the same thing for text after and copy that down. And now you got the first name. Those are a few of the recent Excel functions available in 2024. Make sure you are updated to the latest version of Excel to use them. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.